Hey everybody, I am very excited about this next video. So, before I say anything, this might be a longer video than I usually do. Uh, I sort of want to go into more detail about uh, the process of restoring one of these televisions. Um, and as you can see, this is definitely one that I've been wanting for a while and fully intend on completely restoring. Uh, so if you like the longer types of videos, um, I'm glad, you know, stick around. Uh, if you don't, you can probably scrub to the end. Hopefully I get it working perfectly. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. So this is a 1949 General Electric locomotive set with the brown bake light. So a little backstory of me with this model. When I was in high school, my friend's dad, uh, he owns a pawn shop, and he, he always had cool stuff around his house. And he had one of these sets, and, and it was the black bake light version. And when I started getting into televisions and radios, I thought, oh shit, I should reach out to him, see if he still has it, see if he wants to sell it to me. I reached out, he actually had moved a couple times since, and he doesn't know what really happened to it. it he might have sold it, uh, he doesn't really know, and I was like, damn, that sucks. But I've been wanting this set for a while. I'm a big fan of the small, sort of portable, uh, late 40s, early 50s sets. I think they're really cool. I think it, I could be wrong, but it, I think the insides sort of show a kind of a trial and error of what works best for consumers. So that's what I really like about it. So I picked this up. A guy reached out to me on my Instagram and he got this from a collector in Florida. And he said he the collector also had a bunch of predictas, a bunch of 1920s antennas. And he picked this up along with a predicta. And he didn't really have anything um, I mean, he likes it, but he didn't really have a use for it, didn't know how to get it working. So he reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to, you know, do you want it? And I was like, hell yeah. And as you can see, it definitely came from a collector's house, and the reason I say that is this Bakelite is in great condition. Um, you know, I've, I've seen many 1940s, 1950s Bakelite radios that weigh four pounds, and they're always cracked somewhere, whether you see it or not. It's always cracked. This weighs probably 40 pounds, and it's it's in great condition. I, I was very surprised when he brought it out, because uh, on Instagram he only showed me you know a, a picture of the front, so I didn't really know what was going on back here. But yeah, I don't see any cracks on it. it might be different once I get under it, but it, it's in great condition. It has all the knobs. It's just in great condition, and also this set also has, I feel like a lot, most of the late 40 sets have the focus adjustment on the front, which I really like. I, I, I don't like going back, because there are fine tuning adjustments back here, but I like having the focus on the front. Uh, it's just a personal preference. So I'm going to be trying to show you as much of the restoration process as I can. There are a lot of guys out there on YouTube who, well, not a lot, but that have, you know, 10-part series on restoring a television. I'm, I don't think I'm going to go into that much detail because I think they're a lot smarter than I am when it comes to this sort of stuff, but I know how to get a TV working again. Um, but I'm going to show, I, I want to be as, as entertaining as, as possible, even though this video is probably going to be a bit longer. Um, and I, I just like to have a video of a complete restoration of a model I really like. And this is definitely a model I really like. So I'm... So my first worry on this set, how does the picture tube test? And I don't know what size picture tube this is. It looks a bit small to be a 10 BP4, 
if it is a 10 BP4, that's that's great. I feel like those come come along more often. I feel like once you go down any more inches, uh, they get a lot harder to come by. So I haven't even downloaded the schematic for this yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll film again because I don't know how to take the case off. I think this back part slides out, and then you can work on it. Um, but I'm just I'm gonna show that process as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and download the schematic and just familiar familiarize myself. Uh, with this model, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to get into this, and the fact that it comes from a collector, uh, I I have a strong feeling that uh, he had had work done to it. Uh, and the fact that it's in such great condition, um, I hope that this is a low hour set. You know, I think tabletop models usually have less hours on them. That could be just me being hopeful, but I feel like the floor model black and white televisions have a lot more hours on them. I feel like that's a more family set. I feel like this is a more, you know, dining room, kitchen, bedroom type set uh, for families. I could be wrong, but let's go through this together. So I wanted to give you a closer look at the front because this set has you know, the one knob, but then the other knob behind it. So we got um, focus, secondary knob right here. You got the on off, on off for power and volume. Got the channel selector, fine tuning. Other side, you got horizontal and vertical. I don't know which one's which yet. And then you got brightness and contrast. Pretty much everything you need right there in front, and you you can see the speaker in there as well. It's a pretty small speaker for a television. I'd f figure I'd find that same speaker in a radio, about um, or an All American Five radio. I'd find that same size speaker. But yeah, this front protector screen looks good. Even the little bezel up here, this yellow part, you can see it. I guess the CRT sits right behind that, and that looks good. So I looked at the schematic. Turns out these do use a 10 BP4 picture tube. That's great news. Um, so I assume, I'm assuming, that these disconnect this back portion from the front. We'll go ahead and test that. off. Ooh, maybe it's just the front coming off. Oh yeah, I think it is the front coming off. Well, we'll go ahead and just take this, take the knobs off, put them somewhere safe. Should just come off, right? No. Oh, there's another. Let me zoom out a little bit. There's another screw under here. Angle and set us so. Would you look at that? Comes off nice and easy. So yeah, that's a pretty hefty piece of piece of bakelite. That is thick. I'm gonna put this off to the side over here. All right, so I assume that this is also screwed into the chassis, so that won't be able to come out without me finding the other screws under here. Yeah, there's a little furniture slider feet that go straight to the chassis. They're 
drops the other one. Put the bake light back up on here. Very carefully, all right. <clears throat> So yeah, we got a lot of cobwebs, a lot of dust, but overall it looks fine. It doesn't look like, well, it actually does look like this has some, has had some work done to it. So you can see, sort of see here, there are capacitors here that are sort of tacked in. See sort of the new solder there. Um, I'm not sure what part that would be referencing, or what what part of the chassis that is. Look at the top of that electrolytic. That's just leaking. Straight leaking. Some components do look replaced. I still need to take a look under the chassis. It's very dusty. And the picture tube is a 10 BP4A. That's going to be the first thing I check before I clean anything else. Alright, it's the next day. We start to get into just poking around the set, seeing what we got. So this is a uh, Sprague electrolytic replacement. 300 microfarad at 150. I'll have to check the schematic see what that's supposed to be. This looks like a replacement, maybe. Um, there are a couple other electrolytics on the other side, but here's the high voltage section. So let's see, flyback actually looks pretty all right. High voltage rectifier has one of these 20k capacitors. I guess this is the horizontal output here. And then a 25W4. Flat, I mean this section looks good. Oh, I actually see some modern electrolytics on the bottom. I think that's what I'm going to check out next before I clean, sort of just dust off the chassis. I actually can do that right now. I'm just going to lean it on its side. Alright, there no, doesn't look like there's any labels for these back pots. But I imagine, you know, height, width, vertical linearity. That's probably uh, the horizontal. But yeah, this, this set needs to be dusted off. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look under. I have not looked under yet. So you're going to be seeing this with me. See what we got. Oh wow. Holy shit. This has had work done to it. Alright, let's take a look under here. So we got a lot of Sprague replacements here. It looks like I'm only seeing one original capacitor. A Mallory cap, Mallory, one of these, uh, I forget the brand name on these, has the selenium rectifier still. So these are more modern electrolytics right here. Uh, might have to test them. These over here, 20 microfarad. That's Looks like it's just sitting there. Um, a 300 Sprague up here. Uh, this set definitely has been work on, worked on. It did come from another collector. So I'd be... I wouldn't be surprised if this set worked pretty recently. Um, I am going to clean everything, test all the electrolytics, I need to see if he kept any in service. So it looks like he kept this electro the bottom of this electrolytic here. 
Um, it, that's still in here. That's might be original. Uh, it might be a replacement. Uh, I am going to replace um, these these cans. I just don't trust the the cans, especially if I plan on using this set a good amount. He tacked these out. These selenium rectifiers. So these seleniums are detached right here, and you got a diode. I'm looking for the other diode down here. It looks like he put in a terminal strip and a dropping resistor. Is that the dropping resistor? 10k. That seems way high for that. Oh, and I guess this is the this is the other diode right here. So we got a diode right here, and a diode right there. Other than that, this set does look pretty straightforward to work on. I like that's what I like about these these 40 sets. Everything's laid out very very simply. We have some other original caps. There's one down here, one right there. Those have got to go. Um, it looks like all the others have been replaced. Got an O2-2 right here, another one right here, right there. Yeah, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if this set does work. But before I get ahead of myself, I am going to check everything. But let's start before we dive in. We need to test the picture tube. All right, got my tester out and hooked up. So it is a 10 BP4. There it is. 6.3 regular socket, G2 volts 250, and we're looking from 18 to 58 for the G1 range. So we'll go ahead and set it to 250. So I don't know how long the set's been off for. It looks like a while. All right, I see the filament and the tube starting to light up. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up to 6.3 with the heater adjustment. There we go, right about 6.3. And now I'm just gonna wait a bit to let it heat up for a little bit, a little while, and we can test for shorts. So if there are any shorts, one of these lights will light up. Hopefully there's not. I doubt there is. Just looking at how well the set was taken care of. So we can go ahead and go to shorts. No shorts. Excellent. Emission. Oh, hell yeah. That's Look how sh quickly that needle shoots up for emission. Let's go to cut off. Right, put it right over the cut off mark. Right around 40. Emission. My god. That is a excellent testing tube. A couple of my other sets, uh, their 10 BP4 didn't even test that great. So wow. That's that's awesome. You can sort of see, I think he did some electrical tape around the I guess the socket and the tube just so you know it doesn't get pulled off, which is great. Ion trap right here. Um, looks like over here is the beam builder. Beam bender. Builder, bender. Yeah. I'm not gonna touch anything. I'm sure he had it pretty pretty set. Um, I am gonna clean the potentiometers. I am gonna clean all the tubes just on the outside, just to give it a better look, make sure I can see everything, make sure all the tubes are correct. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of dust on this set. That's all right. I'm going to go ahead and carefully vacuum the set and we can see how it does.
take another look at the speaker. It looks like the speaker did crack at one point, and he put some, uh, I forget what it's called, not epoxy, but some type of silicone, that's what it is. Put some silicone to close it up. I've done that with a few speakers too, so yeah, he, he's he been in and out of this set, the previous collector. Alright, I'm just cleaning the tubes right now. Uh, I didn't want to show this portion because it's just pretty straightforward. But as I'm cleaning this, I'm just getting a strong blue cheese smell from this set, which is pretty gross. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. <laughs> this, this set smells very strange. But I'm just showing, you know, this is, this is usually what I do after I uh, test picture tube, test good. So I go and I clean the tubes. I put a little electronic cleaner on the contacts. After I clean the tubes, just to make sure they're making good contact. And most of the dust is just on top of the tubes. So it's, it's an easy process. And I'm just wiping down with a sort of damp cloth just to get as much dust away as I can. I like to have a semi-clean workspace. Yeah, this set just smells like straight up blue cheese. It's very, very strange. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and test these uh, Sp Sprague's electrolytics just to see what they're testing at. My leads here are a bit small. So this one is supposed to be 300. It's measuring around 375, around 400. It's also could be possible that it's off because I'm testing them and, uh, while they're still in circuit. Um, I'm wondering what this one is supposed to be is supposed to be because it looks like a bunch of 10 microfarad ones all strung together. This is measuring right at 110. Wonder what it's supposed to be. Let's see how many are in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe he was doing a 60 microfarad replacement cap. Something like that. And then let's see this one over here. This comes out to be 112, 111. And these are 20 microfarad and there are three of them, so 60. So I, I assume he was going for a 60 replacement. Um, let's see this one up here. Measuring at 656. So yeah, I'm going to look at the schematic and see what the electrolytics are supposed to be. There's another Sprague up top that I'm not going to test. I'm probably going to replace these depending on what they need to be. Let me check the schematic. Looking at the capacitors, we have a couple cans here. We have a 10 microfarad at 150, a 150 at 15 volt, that'd be a smaller one. A 10 at 350, a 100 at 50, a 1 microfarad at 50, a 150 at 150, a 30 at 450. So what was he using the 300 ones for? Okay, so here's the the schematic. So we do have the 60 and 60 that he was trying to replicate. And then the doubler circuit, I believe it's called here. So that's a 150 and a 150. But he's using 300. Alright, so here's the update. I'm gonna go ahead and replace these Sprague's with a 150 microfarad capacitor. Replace this jumble with a 60 microfarad, and this one with a 60. This one with a 150. There's also a couple on the other side. 
that are also 300 instead of 150. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and replace uh, this original cap. There's another right in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and replace the replacement caps. There's that one. There's that one. I might keep the uh, polypropylene. I think that's how you pronounce it. Caps here. Uh, orange drop. So we got one. I'm going to replace these. These always seem to go bad. Or drift. They drift. So there's one right there, one right there. I'm going to keep that blue one. Keep this blue one. Keep the orange drop. There's another orange drop down here. Another blue one. A little disc capacitor. Uh, where a, an, a, there was a waxy original here. So I'm going to... I'm gonna replace these caps with what it was supposed to be. Uh, apparently there's a few different models of this chassis made and I've been doing some research about the changes in them and I still have a, a little bit more research to go on the set specifically but I definitely know this should not be 300 microfarad. That is way too high. So I will do that and get back. So a quick update. I replaced the spray caps with 150 microfarad ones. I replaced the 60 microfarad caps with just a one, just one 60 microfarad cap. These two right here. That was also a 300 one. That should be 150. And I replaced that as well. Yeah, my work with the electrolytics being tacked in here, pretty wonky, doesn't look too good. But once I get the TV uh, up and running, I'm going to clean this up a bit. I don't want to, I don't want to set something in stone if it turns out something else is wrong or needs to be changed. So they're just sort of tacked in there right now just to get the set working and fine tuned and then I can come back later and clean up how they're being secured in. My next step is to replace the rest of the wax capacitors in here. There's another replacement up here. Uh, it looks pretty modern, but I'm going to go ahead and change it, change it out. And then tackle the cans. And then once all that is done, I think we'll be ready to bring this set up on a Variac. One thing that I am confused about is the choice to use a 10k resistor here. I took another look at the schematic and there is a 1k that's supposed to be there instead. I don't know why it's 10k, but I'm gonna switch that out as well. I have a 1k 10 watt resistor on hand. Alright, I replaced the rest of the capacitors. Replaced the electrolytics. This one right here, this one down here, it's a bit clunky right now. Replaced the resistor in here, that's supposed to be a thousand ohms. And it was, the one that was in there was rated for 10,000. Uh, oh, and this resistor that was in here, the 10K, was shorted. So there was, there was no resistance across it. So something happened there that makes me a little worried that if that if something was something else was wrong with the set and it shorted shorted the resistor there that makes me a little worried um, but we are good for a slow power up all right so I guess it's time for a slow power up so I have my variac right here I got it hooked into a watt meter and then into a, a step down transformer step up transformer uh, and I'm going to see how many watts it's going to be drawing. If it draws watts, uh, if everything starts to go well. Alright, so I'm going to take a look at the back while this is happening. So I turn the set on. We'll turn up the volume a bit.
at 80 volts and it's all right I'm at 80 volts the watts are slowly climbing we're at 10 right now I read online that these have a slow power up but I didn't think it'd be you know this slow all right we're at 15 we're at 21 watts 23 26 30 Still not seeing any filament voltage going on. Alright, I see filament voltages starting to come in. We're at 100 volts right now. 53 watts, 54. Climbing. Alright, it's stopped at 68 watts. But it needs... It should be higher than that, especially... well. When the high voltage kicks in, it should. But what the hell's going on? All right, we're testing the 19 BG6 horizontal output. Cathode short would be on three. No. No cathode short. And then to test it. Oh shit, that tube tests very well. Alright, this so is the damper 25W4. No shorts. Test five. Yep, good. 12SN7. Good on that one. Okay, um, I'm gonna test. So I, I hear high voltage, which is a good sign. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up, but I'm gonna test with my high voltage probe. Um, how much voltage the picture tube is getting. Yeah. That's not getting anything. So I'm getting no high voltage out of the rectifier. Alright, so I'm jumping the, uh, the top of the horizontal output cap. Or the top of the horizontal output tube. And I'm not getting any... anything from there. So I think we have low B plus um, from something. Alright, I guess next step now is to start reading some voltages and see why, or see, I guess try to find out where the problem is. Alright, so I was doing more research. I had to step away, eat dinner, just give me a moment to sort of rethink what could be wrong and I, I think this dropping resistor needs to be probably around 8 ohms I don't know why a 10k was put in there but I was looking at the schematic it says it should be a thousand ohms but then on what well, in the parts description it says this is supposed to be a thousand ohms but on the schematic, it says it's supposed to be uh, 4 ohms for uh, two different models of this set and then 5 ohms for the other two models. So since the seleniums are taken out, I'm going to put in an 8.2 ohm uh, resistor if I still have one. If not, I have a 10 ohm. And try that out because I, I've every TV that I've service that doesn't have a transformer or a power transformer the dropping resistor is always rated on the schematic for 5.6 ohms so I have seeing a 10k in there was really confusing so I'm gonna put in a uh, 5.6 or 8.2 or a 10 if I don't have the 8.2 and then bring it slowly back up on a variac again man I have to be the 
saddest dumbass. Okay, so this resistor actually isn't shorted. It's testing right about 5.4 ohms. So let me show you how I got confused. So when I looked at the resistor immediately, Sprague, 10 watt, 10K. Now looking back at it, 5 ohms. What the fuck? Why is the 10K and 10 watt right next to each other? What is that about? Why does it even say 10K on it? If it's 5 ohms, what is... Okay. Alright, um... Man, that is so weird how they labeled that. Alright, well I have a more modern 5.6K or 5.6 ohm resistor. I'm going to put that back in. That's definitely why we had low B+. That is so weird. Why is the 10K there? Am I losing my mind here? 10K, 10 watt. And then 5 ohms right up there. Okay. That's fine. Everything's fine. Alright, let's ignore all of that prior nonsense. Alright. Now we can slowly bring it back up again. Hopefully more watts this time. So we're at 20 volts. Not much change. 40 volts. Around 4 watts. 60 volts. Uh, 6 watts. Alright. Alright, 25 watts. 27. 29, 33, slowly coming up, 44, 48, all right, so it's climbing. On the schematic, it's at 150 watts. I assume that's when it's, I assume it would get to that once the high voltage kicks in. 66, 68, 71, we're in new territory now. 78, 82, all right, we're climbing, high voltage is High voltage is coming. 94. Definitely hear high voltage now. 103, 104. It's getting around maybe 5k now. All I did was turn up the uh, variac a little bit. Oh, I'm starting to see a picture. Alright, now we're finally getting a picture here. Oh, that's a horizontal and vertical. That's brightness. It's probably contrast. Ion trap was off. Um, oh, well, that's sort of locking in there. Let me get my pattern generator and see if we can't get a steadier image on this. Or I at least get it to a channel where I can start brainstorming. Oh, there we go. So it does not like to lock. Let's see how well you can see this. Oh, okay, you can see it pretty well. The, uh, Alright, I had to turn up the shutter a little bit to match it up. Yeah, that shutter, or that, uh, does not like to lock. Brightness actually looks pretty good. So maybe it not locking, maybe it's a bad sink separator tube. Uh, we can figure that out in a second. I want to fill out the picture tube as much as I can. Uh, it doesn't need to go all the way up or all the way down since the bezel on the cabinet uh, sort of covers it, but this definitely needs to be wider. No, that's not going to work for us. Alright, see there, it's locking in, but then falls apart. Is the horizontal just off? Because I'm getting like those wavelengths. Hmm. 
No. Holy shit, that was it. Horizontal was just off. That's annoying. Okay, hold on. Let me put the horizontal right in the middle and then adjust the coil to where it would lock. So then I have a lot of... All right, there we go. Okay. So that's basically the brightness I'm seeing it at, is what you're seeing it at. Yeah, so those those retrace lines are pretty apparent. I'm not understanding what this fine tuning is doing. But, alright. <laughs> so that looks alright. I mean, given that the design might be cutting it off purposely. The top and bottom and I guess a little bit of the sides because of the bezel. All right, that's what it would look like. <laughs> okay, I'd say that's pretty perfect <laughs> then. I mean, you, you can see a little bit on the sides there, so maybe I do have to figure out the width adjustment, but yeah, with the bezel on, that that's pretty much it. Let me fire up my blonder tongue transmitter and see if it is good to pick up reception. Because the pattern generator is pretty strong in terms of signal strength. So let's see if we can really dial in a good image that's not the pattern generator. All right, got an antenna hooked up now. All right, so those lines that you're seeing going up the screen, that's actually from my blonder tongue transmitter. That's not from the television. Oh wow, that focus is actually great. Just adjusting the ion trap a little bit more to get the brightest image right about there. Just the focus. Why can't we remember a goddamn thing from last night? Because we obviously had a great fucking time. Why don't you just stop worrying for one minute? Be proud of yourself. Alright, so I guess the next step. I think the next step, I'm going to fine-tune the image a bit more. The focus seems a tiny bit off. It, the focus pod has to go all the way to the left to get the get a perfect focus. And also, there are like four different focus channels on the back. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that. I've never seen that before. It all on the schematic, it just says it's focus adjustment. Um, so I'm going to have to look into that, but other than that, with the bezel on, the image looks great. Uh, I think I'm going to hook up a, a VCR or DVD player directly so I'm not getting the uh, the lines going up and or just going up the image. I believe that has to do with caps in the power supply of the blonder tongue. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the update for right now. So I thought I was just about done, um, but I don't think I'm getting a full uh, horizontal sweep. You can still see the sides not not filling out all the way, uh, and also it gets sort of squunched on the, the right side. Uh, I'm going to look at the schematic, and I think I might 
uh, test some resistors underneath. Yeah, I'm going to troubleshoot a little bit. Uh, let me just think about this for a little bit. Alright, so I turned... I put it back on my Variac. And I turned up the voltage to around... One t right at 125. And that seems to fix the issue. But when I plug it right into just a sock wall socket, it doesn't get a... Um, full raster or horizontal sweep so I'm going to look under and test uh, some resistor voltages yeah I think that's the next step it's it's just not getting enough B plus I believe and wow looking at the watt meter it's right at 150 and that's exactly what the schematic says it should be so I think there might be a couple resistors that are out of spec. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this project is not complete yet. Alright, it is fixed. The problem was, I did ask for help on Antique Radio Forums. Um, and I got a lot of feedback on the fact that it does fill out when I went up to 130 volt. There's a filament resistor in the high voltage section, which can limit the filament voltage for your, for the uh, horizontal output. Um, but one of the first easy things someone mentioned is, hey, how does the horizontal output tube test 19 BG6? And it tests fine on the tube tester, but the tube tester can't apply high voltage to these tubes to really test them. Um, so I, I had another on hand, so I popped it in there, and the high voltage looks great. We're pulling around 139 watts, and this isn't even full brightness. That's full brightness. So, I mean, this tube is very strong. So yeah, the image looks great now. I think the horizontal output's finally getting the voltage it needed. I think we're we're on track here to a final image. All put back together. All complete. Put back in the case and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Also, putting in the new horizontal output tube, uh, I now had to switch to another focus channel on the back, because I guess those things are correlated. A lot of spare time in Bodega Bay. Uh, are you planning on staying though? No, just a few hours. Oh, then you're leaving. God, this set is so great. It was something like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean the to... The picture looks so good. Actually, it's none of my business. This is perfect. Yes. Nice drive. It's very beautiful. I turned down the brightness for the Is camera. Really met Mitch? Really? Hmm. Do I? I? Can I get out this way? Go right around. We'll take you back to the main road. Thank you. And the focus is just spot on. Well, that's the video, guys. We got it working. We got it working great. You have a boat from Nathaniel. Let me turn up the brightness a little bit. It's the one right below. That's probably what I would watch it at. It might look a little, yeah, it's a little bit brighter on the camera, but it still looks great. I mean, that's it. That's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I learn more and more on each set that I restore. And this is definitely a set I've been wanting. Thanks for watching the whole video. If you just scrub to the end, here it is.
looking great. 1949 television. Back from the dead. So yeah, I'm not sure what the what my next video is going to be. I'm just going to have to play it by ear. I need to sell a few sets to make room for others. So maybe I'll make a video on sets I want to get rid of. If anyone nearby wants to grab one, that'd be awesome. I'll see you in the next video.